So, you've heard of the famed Van Winkle bourbons? I have. I've heard of them. And you want them. But how good are they really? Could you identify them in a blind? Mm. Well, if you want to find out, then stick around. All right, Wes, so the idea for this episode came because of our community, Bourbon Real Talk community, Mm -hmm. wonderful forum. If you're not in there, you should join its Facebook-based group. We always have a free giveaway going. Yeah. And basically, if you're a member of BRTC, you invite other whiskey enthusiasts. Each invite gets your name into a randomizer to win some item of value. And one of the most recent prizes that we've done was a Van Winkle slash Weller sample pack. Mm -hmm. And the deal was, if you won, then you had to get this sample pack blind, which normally we don't do it blind, but I just thought it'd be fun. And you had to be willing to subject yourself to public scrutiny Mm. and and post your results uh, in the community. Yes. Which happened. Yeah. And the results were shocking. Yeah. As they always are. Yeah. And so the rankings did not come out the way that you would expect, certainly not considering the secondary market value of Van Winkle bottles. Yes. Um, And so I thought it would be fun to put you and I to that same challenge. We might as well. Might as well. So there is a good chance that you and I are going to be very embarrassed by the end of this video. So I think you should stick around to the end and see what happens. Yeah. I'm used to being embarrassed on on this show. So... Uh, but Randy, on the other hand, um, if you're up for it, I'm up for it. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, think we owe it to the people. We owe it to the people, and if we screw it up, then it's just more to learn. Yeah. This though is in the whiskey, at least in my part of my journey, it's easy to be wrong for me because I'm just, I'm still learning. Well, that's kind of the point of this. Yeah. So here we go. So before we get started with the tasting, let's talk a little bit about why this tasting is so interesting. Yeah. So recently we did an episode, episode is Pappy really different than Weller? Mm-hmm. Uh, Buffalo Trace mash bill analysis. It was, it was BRT episode 165. Yeah. And just so you know, the Van Winkle bourbons are manufactured uh, at Buffalo Trace where Weller is, and all of the processes are the same. So the only difference between Weller and Van Winkle are, is the barrel selection process. So when they taste the barrel, they go, this one tastes more like Van Winkle. This one tastes more like the Weller line. Yeah. yeah. Um, and in these particular cases, because you've got in the, in the Van Winkles, you've got the old Rip Van Winkle 10 year, Lot B 12 year, Pappy Van Winkle 15, 20 and 23. And those are all the bourbons. There's a rye, but it, mm-hmm. not relevant for this. Uh, but with the Weller, you have the Weller Antique, which for a long time was a 10 year age stated bourbon, mm-hmm. and it is 107 proof. Right. Uh, the its, its counterpart in the Van Winkle side is a 10 year age stated bourbon that is 107 proof. Right, yeah. So usually when you're seeing premium versus non-premium versions from a distillery, there is a big difference in age or proof, mm-hmm. uh, just so that they're not so similar. Until they dropped the old from the old Weller antique label, it was 10 year age stated, yeah. but it's still supposed to be blended to profile to taste like a 10 year old. And so there really shouldn't be right. any difference between these two whiskeys. Um, and then on the flip side, on the Weller 12, same thing. Um, the Weller 12 is 90 proof. Mm-hmm. The uh, lot B, which is also 12 years old, is 90.4 proof. All right. And so really this is a test to see, can the average whiskey consumer like you or I actually tell the difference in the barrel selection process? That's interesting because, you know, with the only difference being some professional there at on site said, this tastes like Pappy, this tastes like Weller, the profiles are dang near the same they're dang near the same i mean it's all this it's the same production process same same barrels same aging in the same areas so you know it's uh, this is exciting before we get started i think we should establish one rule okay let's go with not sharing our tasting notes and thoughts along the way okay let's keep it to the very end 
Well, and let's let's try not to. Well, ooh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, any, anything can influence. Anything can influence. Your your t- the, the margin of difference between one or the other is so small. Anything could influence you. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just start the music. Boom. Start tasting. Get through it, and then we'll get to the end, and we'll share our thoughts. Hey, nice hat. Hey, thanks. Nice lanyard. Nice rocks glass. Thanks, man. <laughs> nice travel case. Nice blend topper. Thank you. Nice candle. Nice bottle bag. Thanks, man. That's a nice tumbler. Nice woman's t-shirt. Oh, thanks. Nice uh, extra schmedium shirt. Get yourself some nice things and get all the compliments that come along with it. Shop bourbonrealtalk.com. <clears throat> Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. So. Wow, that was tough. That was tough. <clears throat> um, very similar profiles. Right. So, uh, ranked one to four. Number one, where do you fall? Number four. That's fourth place for you. Yeah. Second for me. Number two. That's number three. I'm going upward. Okay. Seems like. So you're four three two one. I am four three two one, and um, I'm two one <clears throat> four three. Okay. So okay. your second, the, the second one here was your favorite. Yeah. Okay. Now, if I were to guess, can we talk about our notes now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that this would the, the higher the higher proof of them. Mm-hmm. It, but the thing was, I don't know. Could just be my palate. Could just be the Torchy's taco I just ate, but this this like proof came through hot to me, like mm-hmm. way it overpowered the flavor profile. <clears throat> now again, catch me on another day, it could be different, but mm-hmm. for me, you could tell that it was a higher proof. At least it tasted like a higher proof than it really should have been. Okay, like these the highest one proof here is what one hundred seven. Yeah, and this is like at least it came through like a one twenty or something. Yeah, but this one again I think is the other higher proof, but it. Flavors came out more for me in that one. Could you tell that second one was a higher proof? I thought it was um, definitely one of the 107s. Okay. Um, I thought number one was also a 107. Did you? Yeah. I thought it was the the 90. I thought this was the lot B. Okay. I mean, it, maybe it just drinks really good for a 107. I don't know. Um, I I my thought was that number two was the old rip. Uh, number one um, was the 107? was the 107, and that number four was the lot B, and number three was the Weller 12. Really? Okay. And so again, wow, one of us is that. about to be embarrassed. Yeah, I've got them probably backwards because this one tasted at least very I, easy to drink. So which I thought, man, this is a little sweeter mm-hmm. on the palate, a little easier to drink. That's probably the lot B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now there's a chance uh, that I got these confused because I was, I was there was a little bit more flavor for me on two, which made me think that it was the lot B, but it might have been an off balance ethanol note on the on the Weller Antique. Uh, but it's time to do the reveal, so let's find out. You know, I won't be surprised if that's the lot B. Okay. <clears throat> Even though it's not, it wouldn't be number one for me normally but i can see how these are very similar in proof all right let's do it <clears throat> you've got the key i do okay. yeah it's on your phone here's the key let me see hang on um photos all right they're lined up accordingly left to right or wait okay so it, it was taken from this side. Oh, okay. So, so there's the lineup. Number one is Lot B. The Lot B. Okay. Uh, or no, 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 no. Number one is Old Rip. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Look at. 
the weakness. Okay, let's look at it like this, folks. Yeah. Number one is the old rip. Old rip. Number two, two. is the OW. Okay. A. 107. Number three is the Weller 12. All right. And then there's Number four your lot B. Was lot B. Okay. You're right. You had it. Well, I didn't have it. Uh, I I confused the uh, Weller with the old rip. I but you that, did you did know you did nail the lot B on the end. Yeah. Uh, I did I did nail the uh, lot B. I nailed the Weller 12. Yeah. Um, I was attracted to the ethanol burn of the the Weller antique. So yeah, that 107. That's your that's your jam. Uh, yeah, and um, ironically, um, I bought this bottle at a charity auction for one thousand four hundred dollars. Wow. Uh, went to a good cause. Yes. And this bottle, I think I paid uh, forty nine ninety nine for. <laughs> so <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah. And I picked this one in a blind. So yeah. Yeah. there it goes to show that, you. That goes to show you. And yeah. I mean, and the same thing here with the Weller 12 is, um, I mean, a 12-year-old whiskey that is, again, you can get at retail a lot cheaper than these outer options here. Um, I mean, I had it number three, or, yeah. or I mean, number two. So um, just, I mean, these are all neck and neck, but just behind the lot B. For whatever reason, I thought that that lot B, I was thinking that it was the 107 because typically that 107 is very easy to drink on mm -hmm. the Old Weller. So I was confusing the two. Um, I was just probably overthinking it. But but yeah, regardless. After, after you mentioned the sweetness of number one, which turned out to be Old Rip, that's when I started second guessing myself on, on one and two. Yeah. I had the proofs right, but uh, definitely got the r ranking uh, wrong on, uh, or maybe not the ranking wrong, but the calling the the brand wrong. But uh, but yeah, the the you ranked the old rip in fourth place behind everything else. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, super weird. Normally, you're, I've paid a lot of money for that bottle. Normally, before. you're a proof hound. So I am a proof hound. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. If this is your first time tuning in, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the show philosophy. Uh, we here at Bourbon Real Talk are about bringing people together around whiskey. Yep. And that's important to me because I lost a loved one to suicide in 2014. And I partially started this channel because I wanted to help people get connected. And I saw the connective power of whiskey when I go to bottle shares. I'd see people that were starting to form friendships and relationships with each other that maybe wouldn't have otherwise become friends because mm -hmm. they were so different that they ran in different circles. And I realized that my brother probably felt like he didn't have a place that he belonged. Um, he probably felt alone, uh, probably felt like he was a burden to those around him. And if he had had that kind of community around him, he may have felt differently. So part of the reason why we started this show is to help people feel that connection. And it's also the reason why we started B Bourbon Real Talk Community, uh, which is a discussion forum, Facebook based group. And we have a no troll philosophy in there. Yeah. And that means that you can go, you can get connected, you can get, you know, support from your whiskey friends, but you can also have a nice discussion and have a good time without fear of being attacked by somebody that you don't know. And that was a lot of what I seen in some of the other forums that were out there was, mm -hmm. you know, strangers saying hateful things. And that made me realize that if a stranger can be hateful online, there's nothing that keeps us from loving a stranger online. And that's why we end every podcast the same way. And that's this. If you woke up this morning and you're unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that we, we love, love you. you. We'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. Whiskey Troll is a person who seeks negative attention and uses contrarian attitudes to derail civil discussion in online forums. They communicate in ways they never would face to face because they're keyboard warriors. Their only goal is to make other people feel inferior. Hey guys, I'm new here. I just got my first Blanton's. And trust me, you probably paid way too much. I don't care much about the Blanton's, but nice <laughs> There's no way that she didn't buy that at secondary. Idiot. Oh, I know how you got that bottle. So, are you sick and tired of the whiskey trolls running your fun online? Well, that's why we started Bourbon Real Talk Community. Congratulations. Let me know what you think when you open it up. Hey, welcome to the group. 
Let me send you over a sample of Blanton's Gold and straight from the barrel. See how you like those. I remember back to my first bottle of Blanton's. It was the birthday to my son, and we enjoy it every year on his birthday. Congrats. So if you're looking to connect with some people online who aren't head over to facebook.com and join Bourbon Real Talk community today.